Okay, now I want to talk about how to maintain the motivation to follow God and to serve God. And this is a very important topic because it will, uh, if a person loses motivation, then, then, you know, then he doesn't want to serve anymore. Or even when he serves God, there is no motivation, no power, no conviction of the heart, no energy that comes out. So where does that come from? How can we have this strong motivation? Um, this strong motivation has to come from the relationship with God. That, uh, now the relationship with God has, has different areas. First, are you sure there is God and there is, there is heaven? That's intellectually. Because if some people say, uh, for me, uh, going to church is knowing God and, and then I don't know for sure if there is God. But I just go to church because I'm used to going to church. That way then your commitment will not be steady. Because you really don't know for sure if God is real, but you just get used to going to church. So the first thing we need to know is for sure there are concrete evidence that God is real, heaven is real. Now this is a big topic, but I just talk about very briefly. For someone to serve God, first we need to know God is real. That God is really helping us. Now how do we know God is real? First, the Bible has many prophecies. The Bible has many prophecies that has come true in the life of Jesus, that has come true in history, that the Bible prophesied about Jesus clearly. His time of coming, uh, who are, uh, he's uh, from Abraham, and from David, and then also uh, when he would come, and where he would be born, and also how he would be crucified. It was prophesied by David when there was no crucifixion. David already wrote that one day his hands and feet will be pierced. His whole thing will be divided by the people, and uh, this is uh, crucifixion. That no clothing. Actually, uh, the description is that there is no clothing. But then, most picture of Jesus is there is clothing. Because they, they don't want it to look too bad. Because they cannot imagine Jesus being naked on the cross. But according to the Old Testament prophecy, and also in the New Testament, <coughs> and also the historical record. In the New Testament record, is that they divide the outer garments. <coughs> And also the, the inner garments, they cast lot. And they took it all, the outside and the inside. And historically, when people were crucified, they were totally, all the clothing was taken off. And the Bible prophesied this clearly. And to a Jew, this is shame. But Jesus took our shame by dying on the cross. The Bible clearly prophesied that. And the Bible has scientific proof that it talks about, for instance, the earth is being hanging in nothing. Instead of flat ground, it's hanging in nothing. The Bible already knew that. And, and other proofs, uh, for instance, they talk about something like cell phone, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, God said to Job, can you, you know, um, they can you send lightnings that send lightning to tell people you are here. That, um, and that happened to, to us today. That we, cell phone, because in those days there was no electricity. So the only thing related to electricity is lightning. And lightning is really electricity. The Bible already said that. You know, that can you send lightning and tell people you are here. And this is what we do all the time with the cell phone. You tell someone that I'm here. The Bible has, has this kind of scientific evidence that, and many others. And also we can experience God. I, because I always keep praying for people. So I see all kinds of miracles. And, and you can see that on uh, YouTube.com forward slash Pastor Yip. 
and you can see different kinds of miracles. Many are recorded in Chinese, but some are English. So, that we can see God is very real, and also we can cast out demons. It's very clear that there are demons in this world. And if there are demons, for sure there is God. Because demons cannot, when people have demons, generally they are out of control. They have anger, they want to die, they want to kill themselves. Demons cause people to lose control. But we see that babies are very beautiful and lovely. The plants are very beautiful. The birds, animals are very beautiful. It cannot be created by demons. It has to be created by God. And also there are many people who died and then the body, the soul leave the body. And when the soul leave the body, they saw what happened around them. And there are many sci scientists who study that and they, and they know that, there, that we do have a soul. When we die, we leave the body and then people can tell what's happening around the body. And then, uh, many of these people, their life is changed because they have this experience and their life is totally changed. And, as, and so these people, many of them are very honest to tell what they experience and they some of them said they saw Jesus or heaven and some of them went to hell and these people they were honest to tell what happened to them so this show us that that they really saw heaven and hell and that there is really heaven and hell and also I know someone who goes to heaven very very often even when, whenever he prays she prays she can go to heaven and she saw Christian who died and went to heaven. And the Christians told them something about their family or their lives. And this minister came back and told them about what the Christians said <coughs> in heaven. And when the family member heard that, they, they said, you must have seen the dead people who, who is in heaven because you can tell exactly what happened in their life, which we did not know before. So there are people like that. I know this person, that she went to heaven and saw at least two Christians who died, and the two Christians told them something about their family and their life. And then she came back and told the family, and the family said, you must have seen, uh, you must have seen them in heaven. So there are objective proofs that God is real, that God can be experienced, and, and uh, there is heaven and hell. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing, we know for sure God is real. And also, if you want to know more, you can get online and look for evidence of God. Uh, although there will be people who speak against it, there will be people who speak against it. Uh, but there are very clear objective proofs that God is real. Mm -hmm. That people speak against the existence of God, not because God doesn't exist, mm -hmm. because they deny the proofs. Okay? Now, if there is God in heaven, how would you respond? Do you want to follow God? For many people, even though they know there is God and there is heaven, it doesn't mean they will commit their life to God. The reason is, maybe heaven is too far away. Maybe the work of God is not close enough. Now for me, why do I have the motivation? Because I um, experience God every time I pray. And I pray for many people and they experience God. And I see the change in their life. And I say, God is so real. What God promised, He really does it. He really fulfills His prophecies, His promises. So I see that God is very real. And I experience God all the time. Like what I told you about the airplane. That, that something I could not imagine. And I have other things like this all the time. I experience God's work. There are people who told me they have shoulder problems for a long time, for a year. And it was healed. Person was uh, a knee problem for 10 years to walk in pain, and then in the prayer was healed. So I see that God is very real. And 
And so that motivates me to really believe God is real. And not only believe, I know God is real. And also, I experience His blessings all the time. So for me, because I have this faith in God and the relationship with God, so I'm totally convinced God is real and He will bless those who follow Him. And that's that He will fulfill the promises in the Bible. That seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to us. That God will give us these blessings. So I'm very convinced. And, and then when I pray for people and help the people, the people are changed. I also work on how to serve better. Now that is what I want to do to, to train. The training, the best is in discussion way. You know, that we discuss together how to do it. And it's best that you can watch me do it. Next Monday to Saturday, in the morning, I will go to a school. And in the school, you will see me pray for the teachers and pray for the children. And you'll see many teachers and children experience God. Because I've done it so many times. I've seen God's work all the time. And I know for sure if I you know, follow God, and also I, I've learned, I've learned many skills. How to listen to people, how to care about people, how to feel the people's feeling, and how to offer Jesus to help the needs, and I know how to help people. So that's partly from the relationship with God, from my own experience with God, from how I help people and how I see people change. So I want to help people. I, I have this motivation because I see that serving God is the best that can happen to my life. Uh, when I serve God, when I love God and bless people, God will know that and God will bless me and give me strength. And this will happen to you too if you are committed to come and and do training like I know it's difficult for you to go home it's a long way that some of you cannot stay for a long time but I admire you for coming for such a long distance with limited transportation it's difficult for you to come I really appreciate your heart of coming but I hope you have the motivation yes I want to learn to be able to do ministry effectively with confidence how to pray for people, how to listen to people, how to respond to them, how to care about them, how to bring them to Jesus and help them to love God more. That's something I've, I kept doing since I became a Christian. I witnessed to many people, I helped many people to love God more. I also trained people to serve God and I saw people change. So I see if I follow God, I can change people's life. So. That gives me motivation. I want to serve God more. That, that's how I maintain. Uh, it's very important that every day I have time with God, that I, I have positive motivation from God. And every time I pray, I can experience God. And when I pray to be, with people, people say they experience the presence of God. So I, I get reinforced over and over and over again to see how people can be changed. So. Now, for you, your experience is not, you know, may not be as rich as I, my experience. But what you can do is, whatever chance you have here, when you see people here. When I first became a Christian, God prompted me to think, do the people come to church, do they all love God? Do they all believe in God for sure? So, I was a new, new person in the church. I wasn't even baptized. I start going to the church, and God gave me this thought. And I start talking to the people in the church, and ask them, are they, do they know for sure God is real? Do they know for sure that they are saved? And I found that many people are not sure. So I start helping them, since I became a Christian. Even before my own baptism, I start helping people in the church. So when people come to the church, if you care about them, listen to them, Pray for them, help them, and then you see them change. And then you see, and then you say, wow, it works. It works. I can help them. So we have to start with serving God, helping people wherever you see them. Now, there are so many people who come to me. 
on the phone, on the internet, and I keep helping them. And I keep seeing people change. And so that's reinforced. So I'm asking you, can you start to go into that? Start to go into that and help the people around here in the church and help the people in your neighborhood. And when you see people walking in the street, talk with them, help them spiritually. And then when you see them change, you say, wow, it works. So when it works, it reinforces, uh, give you stronger faith. But we believe in God not from our, not mainly from our experience. Mainly is from the Bible and from our relationship with God. The, the ministry, the effect of the ministry is an additional help. What I mean is, some people don't have good effect in the ministry. Does it mean that they, they won't have faith? The ministry, the effect of the ministry helps us to have stronger faith in God. But the faith in God comes from knowing that God is real and the promises of God He has fulfilled and we experience God ourselves so we know God is real. Because some people ministry, the effect of ministry may not be very strong. But still we want to say, even if the effect of ministry is not very strong, because of your personal relationship with God, then you are steady in the relationship with God. Then you always hold on to God. The more you hold on to God, the more you experience it. Now, my, just now I talk about God is real. That I experience God and I help people, that I give, see people change. Now, what is my motivation to serve God? Where does it come from? The motivation comes from that I know God is real and people can be helped and, and I also know that my life will one day pass away. I will one day die. My life will be over. The other things I do in the world will not stay. But if I serve God and bless people, the effect will stay forever. So I don't want to waste my life. And I know that if I follow God totally, then my life will bring blessing to people and bring blessing to myself. That my whole life will be a life of blessing. So I, want, I don't want to waste my life. Because if I just earn money in the world, it's not going to stay. It doesn't have long-term effect. But if I serve God, it will have long-term effect. That God can, you know, God will reward me and bless my life. I don't want to waste my life. And also, I want to see more people saved. That's another motivation. I want people saved. I want people changed by God. I want people helped by God. So when you have the motivation to serve God, I want to help you to be able to do it better.